Hi there, Professor Voza and Professor Brugler from CT Tech Biological Sciences. And today we're looking at an arthropod. And no, these are not cockroaches. I, I wouldn't be able to touch them if they were even dead. Right. Um, so these are what? Grasshoppers? Grasshoppers. Locusts? Locusts? Yeah. Some combination thereof. <laughs> yeah, so they're jumping, right, with their long legs. Um, and here we put two because um, we want you to see a male and a female. So we'll get to that at some point. Oops. So arthropods, um, are they soft on the outside or hard on the outside? Tough. Oh, tough. What does that mean? They have an exoskeleton and it contains... Chitin. Chitin. Absolutely. So we have an internal skeleton and you're saying these guys have an external skeleton. So where are all their soft parts? Inside. Ah. So that's the only hard structure they have for support and protection. Okay. And that's pretty cool. It's like an armor all around you. But then it's a problem when you want to grow. Because ah. it's so tough that you have to molt it. Molt? What, is that? what does that mean? You shed it. You shed your skeleton? Yeah. Is there a hard skeleton underneath or is it soft when it's shed? It's soft. There's oh. a new one, bigger one, soft underneath and it has to dry and harden. Oh, okay. And actually... Crabs do that too, and when they molt, we capture them and we eat them. Yum! And these are the soft shell crabs. Oh, yum! And that's less work for us. There you go. Does that mean they're more vulnerable after a molt? Oh yeah. To predation? They're, yeah, they're very fragile at that moment. It's a crucial time. So I, yeah, they don't do it too often. Hmm. <laughs> so how does say this grasshopper, this locust, how does it breathe? Does it have lungs? Does it have gills? What's going on here? Um, it has neither. What? No lungs, no gills. Does it breathe through its skin or its skeleton like no, the No, that's too tough. Oh. They're, they're, they have that covering So it on doesn't them. breathe at all? Uh, it does. Oh. They all need two because cells need oxygen. Oh, uh, that's right. So they have a system of pipes throughout their body that reminds me always of the ventilation system in buildings Ooh. with all those ducts going all over. And then, of course, you need openings on the outside for air to come in and leave. And so they have all these pipes called trachea, the same word we use for our windpipe, because it looks a bit like the windpipe under the microscope. And all that system opens on their abdomen. There are little holes that we can't see, but believe us, they're here. <laughs> and these are the spiracles, right? Yes. Yeah, and these are where those pipes open and air can go in, travel, the cells take the oxygen, and then air will come out. So you're telling me that these grasshoppers breathe not through their head, not through their, you know, their chest, but mm -hmm. towards their back end? The abdomen. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> nuts! Yeah, so maybe if we hold it like that very long, it would die oh. because it can't breathe anymore. Are, are there any other typical any other structures that are typically associated with the head that are not found on the head in this animal? Yeah, um, so the way they hear, so the sounds, Yeah. they don't have that on their head. They what? just have eyes and antennas and the mouth, okay? But they have a little membrane under their wings. And you can see it here, like a round structure. And then the same on the other side. You're telling me those are eardrums? Yep. It's just a membrane, so there's no outer ear like we do. And that's what will allow them to hear sounds. That's insane. Yeah. So it's just a thin membrane. Wow. Hm. So they breathe and they hear, not on their head. Nope. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Their whole body is working for their senses here. Wow. Um, and these are arthropods, so we can... See the jointed legs? Mm -hmm. so that's one uh, feature of arthropods, the exoskeleton, the jointed legs. Um, symmetry is quite obvious, bilateral. Um, cellulomates. What do they make first, mouth or anus? Mm, protostomes. Yep, so mouth, mouth first. first. Um, and there's still a tube within a tube because that's the most common body plan in animals. But now when you add appendages like the legs, the wings, it looks less obvious as in a worm. Um, what are those? Are those wings? Yeah. No. They, they can jump and they can fly. So Both? Here, 
Oh my Look, goodness. they have two pairs of wings. So these are the more protective wings. They're tough. And then if I manage to open oops, these, the thinner ones, red. Wow, yeah. beautiful. Yep, these are really the real wings. Like, Sounds crunchy. Yeah, all that exoskeleton, <laughs> the chitin, <laughs> crunch, crunch. <laughs> right. And then now we say an animal that has a head, a thorax, and the thorax is where the legs are attached. So here, and then the abdomen. So now we see those pre pre precise parts. So are you saying that arthropods are segmented just like our annelids are segmented worms? Yeah, but now we fuse the segments to make those three parts. Wow. And we can so still see segments on the abdomen. Right, yeah. right, right, right. So we've got a head, we've got a thorax, and we've got the abdomen. So these are indeed segmented animals. Yeah. And then they have those wonderful eyes. Um, so they have simple eyes that are more like our eyes, but then they have those different eyes called compound eyes, which work like different um, screens, basically. And that's really unique to that uh, group of animals, the arthropods. So my interpretation of a compound eye is hundreds, if not thousands, of individual eyes that are all seeing the same image. And uh, somehow their brain, if you will, again, I'm going to put in parentheses, or not parentheses, but uh, quotes, is able to stitch it together maybe into one view, or do they oh. literally see hundreds, if not thousands, of the same image? I don't, I don't know. I'm not a grasshopper. Well, me either. <laughs> it's fun to think about. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, what else can we say about these animals? Oh, here we have a male and a female we mentioned before. Oh. So size usually can be a, an indication of which one is the male and which one is the female. The males tend to be smaller. So this is the male, but that could vary with their age too. So that you shouldn't be trusting too much. Um, you would look at the end of their abdomen and the shape will determine if it's a male or a female. So the female has a V-shaped abdomen, mm -hmm. whereas the male is not V-shaped at all. What is the female using that V for? It has a little structure allowing it to lay its eggs. Oh, so it's called okay. the ovipositor. Ovipositor, cool, yeah. cool. Yeah. So it kind of digs out a little hole and with and, its little V and then yeah. sticks the eggs in? Yeah. Excellent, so the male doesn't have that? No, he, uh, he won't lay eggs. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> just checking, just checking. Um, yeah, so these are arthropods, and what type of arthropods? Because I think arthropods are the most abundant animals of all. Yeah, that they They're are. very successful. Um, they are found everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we have, since it's such a big phylum of animal, we have to break it into subphyla. So what are the subphyla? None? <laughs> Crustaceans? Crustacea. Crustaceans okay. are usually the ones we like to eat, like right. shrimps, crabs, if you like that, lobsters. Right. And then they have 10 legs, most of them. Okay. And then there are the insects or exapods. They have six legs, three pairs. So if you see arthropod, six legs, exapod, or you can call it an insect. But we also have those with many legs. So they're called myriapods. And these are the centipedes that can bite. And the millipedes that are harmless. Mm -hmm. And then the last group is going to be all the spiders, the scorpions, and the mites. And these are the chelicerates. Mm -hmm. And they usually have eight legs, but they're not named after their legs. They're named after that weird mouth part that they have called chelicera. And mm -hmm. yep, and you find all these arthropods everywhere, basically. Professor Bo, a question. Do you think that the reason insects are so diverse and have been so successful over evolutionary history has anything to do with their wings? With their wings? Well, if you can fly, you can go way further and get into new places. So that's a cause of success, I guess. Absolutely. And also, they do metamorphosis. Yes. What does that complex word mean? It's a total transformation from the larval stage, the larval stage being like the young that's not capable of reproducing, mm -hmm. um, 
And so there's a complete transformation from that stage to the adult stage, which is capable of reproduction. Um, and usually the larvae looks very different than the adult. So, and it lives in a different environment, uh, eats different foods. So that makes, makes them successful because the larvae and the adults do not compete mm -hmm. against each other. So you can have large numbers of those animals and they don't feel the pressure of competition. Mm. So an example would be like a butterfly. Right, the caterpillar is the larvae and mm -hmm. it cannot reproduce it will go through metamorphosis and then become the adult butterfly that will reproduce sexually, lay eggs that will hatch into the caterpillar. Hmm. Other examples, the mosquitoes, Ooh. they have a larval stage that's in water. People think they're little worms. They're actually little larvae of the mosquitoes. Mm. Yeah. But if you see a baby grasshopper, it looks like a baby grasshopper. It looks like a mini grasshopper. So they don't always do that whole transformation, there but you go. yeah. <laughs>